now today just to ask you a few questions about your knife crime story. I'm Paul, known as Keza, and uh, I'm a window cleaner. I'm 42 years old, I'm married with a, uh, obviously with my wife and two kids, and uh, just live over in Cromington, Northumberland. How did knife crime affect your family? Well, my nephew won James Curry, he was out in the. Um, yeah. <sighs> Sorry. He was in Cromlin Village and uh, he was there uh, with one of his mates and they'd just been delivering Christmas cards and stuff and they went for a pint to the uh, Cromlin Village Club which I absolutely despised because they should have had people there checking to see who was going in and they didn't and what happened was uh, these two little scumbags and their 30s boyfriend and girlfriend were causing trouble in every bar they'd been in in Cromlin and uh, they caused some trouble with some girls and my nephew was like, yeah, what are you doing? Like, just be here, it's Christmas Eve. And uh, the little tramp had tried to hit him over the head with a bottle. So somebody had pushed her over and then that little scumbag had uh, pulled the knife out and stabbed, stabbed my nephew in the stomach. <laughs> and, uh, and it went on in the village club and it went through me deck. He collapsed in the passageway. And uh, so I'm going to my brother, my brother had went up there, my brother was with me. And uh, I got a phone call because I was actually quite poorly in bed. I was cancelling the call and someone had said, answer your fucking phone, Keller. And I thought, who are you talking to me like that? So I ran him to give him shit, you know, you speak to me like that. And he goes, Keller, your own's been stabbed. And I just goes, what? And do you know when you're like, sort of turn back? I was scrolling up for me clothes to get ready and I was like, where's my clothes? I couldn't think properly. And then I got ready and my friend Frank Ward rang us over around the corner and he's like, guess I had like the ambulance stuff, the ambulance people and that's like there, like a tea the ambulance stuff. And uh, I literally like got ready, Frank woke up to pick us up, me brother had went wherever to get uh, Rachel, his wife, and like we were heading towards the RBI in Newcastle, but I was thinking, why haven't you took him to Cromlin Hospital, yeah. which is closer, do you know what I mean? Like, why are you fucking drove all the way there? And uh, I literally pulled up, and my brother was ringing this guy, Paul, like, he's fighting for his life. The woman actually had to take his heart out and was fucking pumping his heart in her hand. And uh, they gave him as much as blood as possible to try to like, bring him back to life. And, uh, like it was just like, I was looking at Keith and he was on the phone and I was like, I can see it. It was like being in a movie, it wasn't fucking real, you know what I mean? And it's just like, I was like, you're looking across like, is this fucking really happening to my family, do you know what I mean? And then, uh, oh, we went in the hospital and that and the woman, the nurse had uh, come through and she'd say it's like, she goes, I'm so sorry and I just like, honestly, it felt like this was my nephew, do you know what I mean? Like how dare someone fucking do that to my nephew? And it was just like the room was just collapsing slowly and I was like, I, I can't even explain the pain I was feeling. So fucking how did my brother and his wife, his sister in field, you know what I mean? And I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, what on earth has happened? And I was like trying to compose myself to like, this, like is this? And I was like, fuck, I just feel like I could have like lifted the hospital off the floor through it. Honestly, it was like, I've never felt pain like in my life. Do you know what I mean? And like, I got home, I just, it just, me, I, I, I ended up having to go to bed and I was like, I cried myself to sleep and when I woke up I was crying, like I like, I literally had no more tears and I was like, fuck, like, I had to go and do a video outside just to, like how angry I was on Facebook and like, everybody was ringing us in Texas and it just, it didn't seem real, you know what I mean, it was like 2016, my nephew went out and didn't come back home and we went, to my brother's house to uh, see Keith and Rachel and Rachel had all the cups set out like Owen and that thing. My nephew still was still on the table mm. and he wasn't fucking able to get back then and he'd go and see and have food with his fucking family, do you know what I mean? Like, and it was just fucking one of the hardest things I'm about to deal with yeah. and I, I had fallen out with my nephew and I didn't make up with him and this is the thing that affected me like yeah. really badly. You know what I mean? It's just like it's still it's like six years, it's like seven Christmases this Christmas coming up and it's like mate, it's not a day goes by where I don't think about them. And if I see some youngins with our mates in the streets, I'm like, that should be my nephew with his mates, 19 year old, like no person should have to fucking should have to feel that, you know what I mean? It's the like the worst feeling in the world that it's just like
a day doesn't go by, but uh, as I say, I had to start going to church and stuff to talk to people because I like I couldn't deal with it mentally. Yeah. And uh, me mum, owns grandma, like it messed her up so badly as well because he used to go and stay to her house. And like, like now my son like goes and rings his grandma. Can you pick us up, my uh, grandma? And drop us off because my dad will kick off because it's after nine o'clock. That little <laughs> things like that. She likes things like yeah. that because that's what I own done. And it's like little nice things that she can take from that. You know what I mean? But obviously. It's it's like why would somebody even take a knife out any day, never mind Christmas Eve, yeah. and go fucking stab somebody? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like why would that? Just like the church, the cowards we are. Yeah. It's not way to put words, so the, the the change that it, the thing we've like raised it was over seventeen thousand pound for to get a bike called the own James Carey bike for Northumbria blood bikers, and we've done that in memory of him because what had happened was they'd give him every pint of blood that they could possibly give him. But it like literally, it had sliced the main artery to his heart. So that's how like they didn't, they weren't able to see me because that little, just like literally a couple of mil to the right, and it wouldn't have hit the main artery. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like to even carry a knife to put into another human being a bit of a like how dare you even do that? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Who are you to do that? Like the end of the day, why would? And then obviously it has affected you, but how would you say? It's affected your family and yourself. Obviously. Massively, it causes it causes a ripple effect where it affects other people. I had people when I was at work and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Come out like give us a kiss and a cuddle and that. Like Paul, like they were crying with me. You know that doorstep and that. This was like three four months later, and they were like saying like, why would someone even do that on it? Like event where it's a, a family, a family like nice thing. You know what I mean? It's like it's so hard to even grasp now in my head. How somebody would take a knife up, take the gun thing, it's like, oh, it's so cool, I'm carrying a knife. No, it's not. It's not cool. You don't understand the pain that you cause. So if like someone comes up to me and you they stab us, like our friends here, it affects them as well. Yeah. It affects the further effect, you know what I mean? Then people think, well, I'm gonna stop carrying a knife if I've got to worry about my family getting stabbed. Yeah. It's like, do you know what I mean? It's like a big circle. No, take that circle out, get rid of it, and create like positive vibes, do you know what I mean? Not angry, like do you know what I mean? It's, it's it's so hard to think now of like the culture that it is and the gangs that it is. It's like we can't stop it. We can try to put the word out there yeah. and say, listen, it's not clever. People carry guns, people carry knives, people carry like machetes, which is not a knife, it's like a machete. Yeah, it's called sure. a machete for a reason. Like, why would you feel the need to go and carry that into a kid's park and stuff? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's nah, it's it's just it's it's there's no words for it, I can't grasp in your head, like how people can do that. Yeah. What do you think about King of the Ring? I'll give you a little insight. Now, we're an organisation to help people put down a knife and use their left and right. So if they've got any beef or any problems, I tell them to squash it in the ring and then you get to go home and live. Now, do you think that would help with knife crime and mental health? Yeah, it issue? would be outstanding for people to take note and do that. Because if you look at the travellers, they haven't got the best things that they do, but if you look at what they do, they get people together, if they've got a problem, they get there, they use their fists, they don't can use weapons, and then they also see as well, no bite, no doing this, no doing that. That's exactly how it should be. But if you've got a problem with somebody, you know what I mean? You don't need to go and try to kill them yeah, or go yeah. and do whatever. My motto is never steal, never lie, and never stab somebody. That's my three motto things in life. Do you know what I mean? And like I just feel that doing something like that with what you are doing and it gets the word out. Well, I've got a problem with him. Let's go to the ring. Yeah. <laughs> no bother. How about let's go to the ring? In fact, why don't we not do it for charity? Why not raise some money? We'll do it on a charity show. Do you know what I mean? You just like you should be doing things like that because like you want to be going stabbing each other. And, uh, it just annoys us. Do you know what I mean? Just don't stab each other. If you've got a problem, sort it out in the ring. Full stop. What advice would you give to the youth to help them get out of the gang slash knife culture? Please, please just think about the consequences afterwards. You don't just ruin your life, you ruin their life, the family's life, the friends' lives, and the pain that you cause is like nothing that you could ever even imagine. Yeah. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There's nothing you could feel other than pain, what you feel about someone loses a life by a knife. There's so many now, and it's like a trend, and it needs to stop. If you've got a problem, get in touch with some people, have a fight in the ring, put the gloves on, no gloves, shake hands afterwards, no animosity left whatsoever. That would be the best way. Great. Thank you for your story, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully, that's a lot, man. That's good.